Last week, I posted this video of me trying out Capture One for the first time, and in that video, I basically just wanted to see if the editing process was similar to Lightroom, and didn't really go over all the features Capture One has. At the end of that video, I said that I would continue to use Capture One until the end of my trial, and then switch back to Lightroom because I'm so used to it. But after the features, I'm gonna show you today, Capture One might be my new editing program. So let's get straight into it. One of the features that I wasn't really too sure how to use was the layers feature. I assumed it was similar to working with layers in Photoshop, but when I clicked on the plus button here or the create new layer button here and tried making any adjustments to my exposure or color, nothing happened. But there's actually a drop down menu right beside the plus button where you can go ahead and create a new filled adjustment layer. With this new filled adjustment layer created, you can go ahead and make changes to your exposure, your color, anything you want, and it'll take effect on the photo. But let me show you why this is such a great feature and why I wish Lightroom had something like this. So let's say you were making your typical color adjustments. We'll go over to our color tab and then we'll just add some green into our shadows. And we're gonna name all these layers here so so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now for the heck of it, let's say we also wanted to add some red into those shadows to kind of blend the two and get a mix of both green and red. We'll add a new filled adjustment layer and then we'll add some red into those shadows. We'll rename this red. Now let's do the exact same thing with blue. Let's create a new filled adjustment layer, add some blue into those shadows and rename this blue. And now we have a photo that has green, red, and blue in our shadows. It might not look like it because it kind of balanced out the photo to the middle of the color wheel, but let's change that. If we click on our blue layer and go up to opacity, we can actually change the opacity of each color. I can do the exact same thing for our green layer, and I can do the exact same thing for our red layer. This gives us the ability to really fine tune what colors we want in the shadows of our image. This layer stacking method can be used with our midtones, our highlights, our curve adjustments, basically any adjustment we want. Using layers, you don't just have one tone curve like you do in Lightroom. If we go ahead and create a new filled adjustment layer and go over to our exposure tab and then scroll down to our curve, we can use one layer to create our basic S curve and then we can create a new filled adjustment layer and use this for little minuscule adjustments here. Let's say something like that. And then we can create a new layer to raise that black point. Oh, and remember this issue? I don't know how to uncheck it to see the adjustments it made. Yeah, you can do that by using adjustment layers. You can make all of your exposure edits on one layer, your color edits on another layer, and then just toggle them on or off to see the progress you're making. Did anyone count how many times I've said layer since the beginning of this video? It's a lot. Let's take a look at presets. No, not presets like in Lightroom. Those are called styles in Capture One. This is one of my favorite features. Presets can be used to save adjustments you've made with certain tools. For example, with every portrait that I edit, I usually like to go to Clarity and drop this by negative 10 to negative 20 just to take off some of that digital edge but at the same time I don't want to remove any detail in her skin so I'll raise the structure by usually about 10 as well again this is an adjustment I make with almost every single one of my portraits but if it's an adjustment I have to make with almost every single one of my portraits why do I have to do it the hard way and adjust the sliders every single time in capture one you don't. All you have to do is go up to this little hamburger looking button and click on save custom preset. Select both clarity and structure. Usually they'll be already set. Click save and then we'll just call this less digital. Now if we go ahead and reset this clarity adjustment, all we have to do is go up to the hamburger looking button and click on our preset that we made less digital. Presets are just like layers where you have the ability to use it with almost every single tool in Capture One. This is where it really gets cool though. You can stack these presets on top of each other. So let's say you're editing a landscape and you usually like to go for those darker, moodier greens. And if we take a look at how our trees were before, now they're a lot more darker and moodier. So because that's a common look we do, we're gonna go up to the hamburger logo and we're just gonna go ahead and save that as a custom preset. We're gonna select color editor basic cause that's where we made our adjustments. Click on save and name this moody greens. 
So if we reset the color editor, go up to our hamburger button and click on moody greens, you can see that our change takes effect. But let's say with an edit like this, you like to make a bright blue teal sky. We're gonna go ahead and select our teal sky. And now we have a super bright teal sky. Again, this is another adjustment we usually make. So we're gonna go up to our hamburger button, click on save custom preset, select color editor advanced, cause that's where we change the sky from. Click on save and name this bright teal sky. Now we can go ahead and reset our color editor, go up to our hamburger button and click on bright teal sky. And you can see that it got applied to the photo. We can also apply our moody greens to our trees as long as your stack presets is checked. Now just imagine you have presets set up for every single tool and you have over a hundred different combinations where you can mix and match with just one click. You can take your editing from half an hour with one photo to five minutes. This is how powerful presets are in capture one. Let's move on to our curves. In Capture One, we have another channel for our curves, and that's Luma. You can see right here that we have the RGB, Luma, red, green, and blue channels. Luma, you guessed it, affects the luminance in your image. But so does the RGB channel. This is true, but the Luma channel only affects the Luma values, while it still protects the saturation of colors in your image. Let me show you. Let's go ahead and create a new filled adjustment layer, and we'll just name this RGB. After our RGB layer has been created, we're gonna go down to our curve, make sure we're on the RGB channel and create a basic S curve. You can see that our image has a lot much more contrast, it's a lot more punchy, and our saturation has been boosted a little bit. Now let's uncheck the RGB layer, create a new filled adjustment layer, and we're gonna name this one Luma. Then we're gonna make sure our Luma layer is selected. We're gonna go down to our curve, select our Luma channel and create the exact same S curve that we did in our RGB curve. And to do that, I'm gonna go over to our RGB curve and grab the exact same values and import it into our Luma curve. 64, 48. Now that we have the exact same curve, you can see that our RGB curve is 6448 on the bottom point and 191, 206 on the top one. Go to our Luma one, our input is 6448 and the top one is 191, 206. So the exact same curve and let's put these images side by side on the screen. You can see that the one on the right, which was edited with our Luma curve is not as saturated as the one on the left. This is important because it allows you to control your contrast and exposure completely separate from the colors in your image. And lastly, Capture One allows you to make multiple exports at the exact same time. So let's say these photos are done and we're ready to export. We're gonna go up to our export button at the very top here, and now we're in our export window. In the top left, you can see that we have export recipes. This is like export presets in Lightroom. You can see that I have mine right here. One for Instagram, this has all my resolution settings that I use for Instagram, one for my website which is completely different resolutions than what I use for Instagram and one for client proofing. The proofing recipe also has its own resolution, metadata, but also my watermark on it. To create these it's super simple. All you have to do is click on the plus button, click on create new recipe, name it whatever you want, and then scroll down select show all options at the very bottom and then start making your changes to the format, the size, the resolution, all that. But like I said, Capture One allows you to make multiple exports at the exact same time. So let's say for whatever reason, these three photos were gonna be posted to Instagram, they're gonna be put on my website and they're gonna be sent to clients for proofing. I'm gonna select all three of these recipes here. So we're gonna deselect them and then I'm just gonna select them all again. And then we're gonna go ahead and just click export three images. And now our three photos are gonna be exported three different methods. And if you set it up properly, Capture One will also put the multiple exports in their separate subfolders. As you can see right here, you can see that the proofing ones have a watermark on top 
and the Instagram ones don't. With that being said, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Which program do you think is better, Lightroom or Capture One and why? Personally, after using Capture One for these past couple days, I've really enjoyed using it. Being able to create presets for each tool and being able to mix and match them, as well as make multiple exports at the exact same time is a game changer when it comes to speeding up my workflow. You can also purchase Capture One completely outright, which if you know anything about me, I hate subscriptions. That was the main reason why I switched from Premiere Pro to Final Cut Pro. But anyway, there is a downside if I switch to Capture One, and that's not being able to sync photos from my computer to my iPad and being able to edit off of both devices, which I actually do quite often. So we'll see. Again, drop a comment and let me know what you think. Make sure you hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow and helps me continue to make videos for you. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this and hit that bell button to be notified when I post a new video and I'll see you in the next one.